Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. And now, the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Black Figurine of Death. Is that you, David? Yes, I heard a shot. So did we. I thought it was one of you. It was Sawyer. He came out late tonight. I found him out in the mausoleum about an hour ago. Here's his room. Try the door. It's open. <gasps> On the floor. Is he? Yes. He's dead. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Black Figurine of Death. And now for our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Black Figurine of Death. Through all the years of man's existence, no matter what he has learned or been taught from generation to generation, still he carries in the innermost depths of his mind a certain fear of the darkness, a fear of the night, which is somehow associated with death, and which in actuality is the fear of death itself. Each of us in his lifetime will probably come in contact with some psychic phenomenon, either directly or indirectly through the experience of a relative or acquaintance. An experience never to be forgotten. And about such an experience is my story tonight. I was there with the others the night he died. We stood at the foot of the bed, Joyce and Harold and I. Amos Jansen's head was cushioned on a pillow, and in his hand he held a little figurine. You sent for us, Uncle Amos? Of course I did. Otherwise you wouldn't be here in my room, Harold. No, Uncle Amos is no... Be quiet! Be quiet, all of you. Ah, you're here too, David. Uh, Yes, sir, I... I didn't ask for a speech, young man. I'll do the talking, if you don't mind. I must speak to all of you while I still have time. Why don't you rest, Uncle Amos? Rest? (laughs) You'd like to see that, wouldn't you, Joyce? David? Harold? What? No answer from any of you? I know why you can't say anything. Because it's the truth. Now, see here, Uncle Amos. Go and listen to me, young man. These last years of my life, you've all left me alone. You've had more important things to do. That is, until tonight. Ah, tonight you're all here because you know I'm dying. You've come here like a pack of wolves, waiting for me to die, waiting for your chance to inherit my estate. Oh, that's not true, Uncle Amos. Oh, isn't it? I think it is. (laughs) Oh, don't worry. You'll inherit the estate, the three of you. But in the end, you'll wish you never had. What do you mean, Uncle Amos? That though I die, you'll see me again. All of you who've hated me. And you'll know of my presence when you see this. Ah, that's just a little figurine, Uncle Amos. Ah, you'll wish you'd never seen it before I'm through. You'll wish that you'd never known me. That you'd never been born. Before you die, you'll all learn what fear is. You'll learn how it feels to be... (laughs) Feel to be... Alone. Uncle Amos... He's dead, Joyce. Oh, no. Oh, no, he can't. He's dead, all right. What's that? Something dropped out of his hand. Why? Just a little figurine. The little figurine lay there on the floor. It had fallen from Uncle Amos's hand just as he died. And when it struck the floor, it had broken into three pieces. 
I picked them up and held them in my hand. The pieces fitted together perfectly, much like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. It was a queer little figure, its arms raised in supplication, a look of fear upon its face. There was something frightening about it. Three days later, Uncle Amos was buried in the family mausoleum at the north end of the estate. A week after that, we had gathered again in the library of the old house with Carl Sawyer, the executor of the estate. As you know, your uncle appointed me as executor of the estate and left instructions that the three main heirs, ten days following his demise, be gathered together in this house for a reading of the will. You told us that earlier, Mr. Sawyer. Uh, So I did. Are you all seated comfortably? Uh, quite comfortably, Mr. Sawyer. It's a rather long will, you know. <clears throat> now, I shall begin. I, Amos Johnson, being of sound mind and body, do make, ordain, and publish this test instrument as my last will and... Uh, Mr. Test. Sawyer, why don't you just tell us about the will? Hmm? That's a rather unusual procedure, David. Well, David's right, Mr. Sawyer. It'll save a lot of time and trouble. Well, <clears throat> perhaps you're right. Let me see. Now, referring to the disposition of the monies and property... It's to be divided equally amongst the three of you. Of course, there are certain gifts to the servants. Naturally. Yes, naturally. There is a considerable amount of money to be divided, even after taxes. Each of you will be independent for life. I can't understand Uncle Amos willing us the entire estate. The night he died... Uh, contrary <clears throat> to what you may think, your Uncle Amos was really quite fond of you. Is that all to the will, Mr. Swine? No. Of course you realize that if one of you were to die, his or her share of the estate would be divided between the two remaining heirs. And there is one other proviso which I cannot quite understand. Yes? Your uncle made one condition referring to the disposition of the monies. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, Oh, yes, yes. (coughs) Here it is. May I read it, please? The heirs are to reside in the family house on the estate for a period of one year. If this is not done, their claim to the estate is to be nullified, and they are to be left without a penny. Unfortunately, they were present very infrequently during the last years of my life. That's a rather strange provision. Yes, isn't it? However, as executor of your uncle's will, it is up to me to make sure the provisions are carried out. And believe me, I feel a deep sense of duty to your uh, late... four of us discussed the will until the early hours of the morning. We persuaded Sawyer to spend the night with us, to return to the city in the morning. The house became quite silent, and the only sound I heard was the ticking of the clock on my dresser. I wondered about the provision of the will in which Uncle Amos ordered that we make our residence in his house. I was lying awake in bed thinking of that when... Standing outside my door in the hallway was the housekeeper. Mr. David. Yes, Emily. I found this in my bedroom tonight. Oh, let me see it. Here. Mm-hmm. It's a little black figurine, just like the one my uncle had. Hmm. Uh, you can have it back now, Emily. Oh, it, uh, it frightened me, so I, I, I came to you, Mr. David. How do you think it got there, Emily? Oh, well, uh... There's something strange going on in this house, Mr. David. And uh, I have an idea. I know who's in bed. Who's talking out there? Oh, it's you, David. And Emily. (coughs) You're uh, up rather late, aren't you? Yes, Mr. Sawyer. I I was just going to bed. If if you'll excuse me. Uh, Good night, Emily. Good night, sir. I'll see you in the morning. Well, I suppose I'd better get back to bed, too. Good night, David. Good night, Mr. Sawyer. I watched him go back into his room. Then I turned and went back into mine. Emily had been on the point of saying something to me. Something that was important enough to her to make a special trip to my room. I got back into bed. Wondered what she'd wanted to tell me. Little by little, sleep clouded my brain. And I was half asleep. Back 
now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Black Figurine of Death. I had been just on the point of falling asleep. Ah! Sawyer, I heard someone scream. So did I, David. I don't know, I heard something. I know I did. There's David and Mr. Sawyer. Maybe they can tell us what happened. Did you two hear anything? It was a scream. First, I thought it might have been you, Joyce. I think it came from the servants' quarters. Emily. What did you say, David? It'll keep. Come on. You think it was the housekeeper, David? It has to be. Maybe she was just startled or something. Well, we'll see in a moment. No, that, that's a room just down the hall. I hope it's nothing serious. It was serious enough to make her scream. Emily! Emily, is anything wrong? Well, try the door, David. Right. It's unlocked. The light's on in there. She's not in bed. She's... Oh, on the floor. Maybe she fainted. No. She's dead. And look, right beside her, there's a little broken black figurine. Though the police came out and went over everything, there were no clues to follow. They said that Emily had been strangled, but there was nothing to indicate who might have done it. The police continued their investigation for almost a month. But at the end of that time, all they could write down in their case book was murder unsolved. One evening, about six weeks after Emily's death, Harold, Joyce, and I were in the living room. The police said they'd never be able to find out who did it unless something new turned up. And it probably won't. Oh, the whole thing frightens me. I still remember Uncle Amos's dying words. That though I die, you'll see me again. All of you who have hated me. And you'll know of my presence when you see this. What oh, makes me shudder every time I think of it? I've been thinking about what he said, too, Joyce. I wonder if he could come back. You mean come back after death? Yes. <laughs> Don't be a fool, Harold. Once a man dies, he's dead. Is he? I'm not so sure of that. I shouldn't talk that way, Harold. It's frightening. Would you come out with me to the mausoleum, Dave? Why? When I came in? You probably weren't looking over there. I wasn't either. Another little black figurine. Broken just like the others. It gave me an eerie sensation. The little figure was broken into three pieces. I looked at Harold, and he seemed to be as afraid as I was. We locked up the mausoleum again and went back to the house. By that time, I began to wonder if perhaps Uncle Amos was striking back at us from beyond the grave. We said goodnight about 11 and retired to our rooms. couldn't get to sleep. I'd fall into a half doze and then snap out of it again. I felt as if, as if someone were watching me. That there were unseen eyes in the dark waiting for me to fall asleep. I knew it was only my imagination. Yet that feeling would not go away. About three o'clock I got out of bed. I decided to return to the mausoleum. As I went out the front door, I noticed a light drizzle had sprung up. Something drew me toward the mausoleum. A compulsion, an inner force over which I had absolutely no control. I walked slowly up the gravel walk leading to the mausoleum. Not even noticing the light rain which fell on me. I was close enough to see the doorway. I received a distinct shock. For the door was open, and there was a circle of light behind it. I walked to the door. I tried to get through the door quietly. But I jarred it a little. And the noise made the man inside whirl around. In his hand, he held a gun. David! What are you doing here? I... I might ask you the same question, Mr. Sawyer.
Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Black Figurine of Death. I had gone into the mausoleum, standing there with a gun in his hand with the executor of the estate, Carl Sayer. David! What are you doing here? I... I might ask you the same question, Mr. Sire. I began to wonder. <clears throat> I, I don't believe in people coming back after they die, but... Is that the reason for the gun? I didn't know what I'd find. I wanted to be safe, that's all. Now that I see it's you, I'll put it back in my pocket. By the way, David, what are you doing out here? I... I was restless. Harold thinks everything that's happened has some supernatural significance. All his talk made me nervous. I see. And do you think that there is something supernatural about the way Emily died? I don't know, Mr. Sire. I just don't know. Sawyer and I returned to the house. I asked him to spend the remainder of the night with us. Besides, I wanted to keep an eye on him. I didn't feel much like sleeping, so I went down to the library, picked out a book, and sat down to read. David? Uh, yes? Mr. Sawyer told me you were down here. What's the matter? Uh, I can't sleep. David, I, um, I talked to Mr. Sawyer for almost ten minutes... He said he thinks that you're in back of everything. What did you say to that? I told him I thought he was wrong. Thanks for your confidence, Joyce. The more I think about it, the more I think that Harold's right in what he says. You mean that Uncle Amos has come back to life? Yes. I'd keep an eye on Sawyer if I were you. Do you think he's in back of it? I'm not sure. But you must have some reason for it. I went out to the mausoleum tonight about an hour ago. Sawyer was out there. He had a gun in his hand. You told me he was just curious. Why should he suddenly get curious at three o'clock in the morning? Well, it does seem rather odd that he... No! Was... Stay away from me! I don't want to move! Stay away from me! That was Sawyer. Come on. Well, it couldn't happen again. It just couldn't. We'll see. Matthew Davis. Yes. I heard a shot. But so did we. I thought it was one of you. It was Sawyer. He came out late tonight. I found him out in the mausoleum about an hour ago. Yes, sir. Try the door. It's open. On the floor. Is he? Yes. He's dead. Sawyer lay there on the floor, sprawled in the grotesque position of death. By one outstretched hand was a gun, and by the other, broken into three pieces, was a little black figurine. Harold called the police. They said they'd be out as soon as they could. The three of us went downstairs to the living room. I was right. It is Uncle Angus who's behind it. It must be. There's no other explanation. I told you before that there are certain things which can never be explained. The deaths of Emily and Sawyer prove that. You don't still think that Sawyer was in back of it, do you, David? Hardly. Will or no will, I'm leaving here now. I'm not going to stay around here and be killed like the others. I'm going upstairs and back. I don't know why. I'm going to leave too, David. What about you? I don't know. I still can't make myself believe. Ah! David! Stay here. Oh, no, no, I'll go with you. Harold's dead. I'm... He has to be all right. Harold! Harold! It doesn't answer. Harold! Where are you? Harold! Don't answer us! His door is open. He'll be dead. He'll be dead just like the others. No, Joyce, he's not here. It's a muscle Uncle Amos came and took him back to the mausoleum. We went into Sawyer's room. Harold wasn't there, nor was Sawyer's gun. I supposed that Harold had picked it up on his way to the room. I decided to go out to the mausoleum to see if Joyce was right, to see if Harold's dead body would be found there. wouldn't remain in the house alone, so together we started out through the rain-filled night. Why don't we wait until the police come, Dave? If this is something supernatural, then they wouldn't be able to help us anyway. David. What's the matter? Marceline, doors open. You can stay here if you want. I'm going in. I'll go with you. It's 
Stay close to me, Joyce. I will. I don't like it in here, David. Neither do I. But you're going to remain here for some time. David! That was Harold's voice. That's right. But turn the flashlight on. You can see me then. We thought you were... Dead? Hardly. But you two will be very soon. He's a gun, David. That's right, Sawyer's gun. Plan this very carefully, David. When the police arrive, they'll find the three of you dead, and I'll be wounded. Tell them that Sawyer was behind it all, that he killed both of you out here, and that he came into the house searching for me. There was a fight. The gun went off. And he died. Then you killed Emily and Sawyer. Yes. I'm going to kill both of you, too. You don't think I believed all that hokum I fed you about Uncle Amos coming back, do you? Of course not. But it served its purpose. And now you'll serve yours. Phil, Phil, look out in back of you. How stupid do you think I am? Uncle Amos is coughing and slipping. Get out of the way, Phil. Get out of the way. <laughs> Uncle Amos. What did you say? I remember what Uncle Amos said when he was dying. That he'd come back and settle with us. The coffin. I wonder if it was just an accident that it slipped out of the crypt. Or whether Uncle Amos really did come back. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.